Mr. Speaker? Ms. Howard, for Would the gentleman yield? Would the gentleman yield? Yes, I yield. Gentleman yields. Thank you, Mr. Parker. I know we talked earlier about maybe what some of the differences were between your bill and Representative Nobles, and can you elaborate on what those differences are, please? Well, this is, this is specifically focused on being an efficiency audit of TANF exclusively, uh, the interval being once every six years. We could have set that at any point. I did not want this to be an ongoing regular thing every year or something along those lines that would affect the productivity of the agency. I felt six years was the right interval. Uh, so we are literally just focusing on these opportunities where we can find uh, you know, redundancies that are currently exi existing, uh, things that are uh, duplicative, uh, looking broadly for more efficiency and budget and operations matters. You know, when you look at what's happening, Representative, today, and this is a stat uh, that is from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, only 4% of basic assistance uh, of this billion dollars, roughly, is going to truly direct payments to these needy families. So we're, we're looking at those items, and I just think that we as the legislative body in Texas need to have real, real tools of assessment on whether or not we are getting the greatest bang for the buck, so to speak. Uh, and I, my personal desire is for nothing but to find inefficiencies and direct those dollars back to those that are in need. So, and I appreciate that very much. So you're, you're looking at this in terms of finding ways to get more dollars going directly to Texans who are in need of these dollars. Is that what you're saying? Representative, yes. Only 4% of that roughly billion dollars are going directly to those families. The national average is about 21%. So just to kind of give you a, a frame of reference from where I'm coming. Well, um, and I know you know as a business person that you still need to have some administrative costs here, that, they're, that you don't just have programs, they have to be staffed, and a absolutely. there's a lot with our, that, right? Our, our administrative layer runs about 12%. Uh, the national average is about 10%. Uh, so, but uh, again, I'm not taking away the fact that you need to have an administrative layer. I just believe that we need an assessment to be done to understand financially what's taking place. And I want to also add what's unique about this. This is done by a third-party firm uh, that will be selected through the procurement process, uh, a professional firm that does these types of efficiency audits every day of the week all over the country. Is there a reason uh, you chose that outside firm instead of, say, using the state auditor's office? Or I've got tremendous respect for our state auditor and all of our state employees. I just think there's nothing like a new set of fresh eyes to look at the situation. I'm a big believer in, in third-party audits in this regard, in, in, in any type of business endeavor, particularly when you're dealing with a billion dollars in taxpayer money. Do you know what programs TANF actually covers and supports? Do you know what the money sure. goes to? Sure, sure. You want to go through sure. those? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, first and foremost, let's talk about work activities. We can mm -hmm. talk about work supports and supportive services. We can talk about child care, uh, which actually, none of the dollars actually go to child care in Texas, but in other programs across the country with TANF it does. We can obviously talk about administration and systems. We can talk about tax credits. We can talk about pre-K and Head Start. We can talk about child welfare. We can talk about any number of other issues. So, so it goes to a lot of programs is what you're saying. A lot, a lot of elements to what's taking place, Representative. So do you know also that it goes to other programs here in Texas, such as the AG's office uses the TANF dollars to help support their child support enforcement incentive payments and to ensure that Texans receive child support. Were you aware of that? Yes, I mean, the, the number of these dollars are used in, in, in good ways. Um, I'm, by, I'm by no means being critical of some of those ways. Right. I, just want to find, I just want to find ways that we can be more efficient ultimately in delivering, frankly, more resource directly to those families that are needy. And I think this is, this is part of where the challenge is, is determining what directly means because um, I think a lot of people think of TANF in terms of those cash payments that are very direct sure. to, to families. But what we're talking about here is uh, the costs of, of supporting programs that also provide direct benefits, even though they're not directly getting TANF dollars. So, for instance, did you know that DFPS, Department of Family and Protective Services, also uses TANF uh, dollars together with Title IV E dollars 
to um, maximize the delivery of child protective and adult protective services through direct delivery staff and program support. So again, another way that it's going to it, what might be considered administrative, but it's providing direct support to folks. Well, I would say that's probably more, I mean, categorically, I would say it's probably more indirect, but yes, it's providing benefit representative. But it, it, right, okay, which, however you would like to define that. that. But I don't dispute that. I don't dispute that. The, the, the part that I think is going to be, we've got to be careful about defining is, to your point, the 4% that you mentioned sure. is probably the direct cash payments as opposed to some of these other things. So like, thanks to, to Chairman Capriglione, uh, right here in the House version of our budget that we just uh, have passed, uh, we used TANF dollars to enhance services and capacity of the Family Violence Program and the Children's Advocacy Centers. Sure. But these dollars are going to be used administratively to help stand up shelters for victims of domestic violence, to hire mental health clinicians that are needed to screen children who are victims of domestic and sexual assault. That is and, correct. And much more. So, so again, it's, I think it's going to be, you have to be really careful in how we define this. No, Re Representative, you, you are precise. And my comment was about 4% that is truly direct payments. Right. But you're correct. These are indirect benefits, obviously, for for these families and folks that are part of the program. So again, I'm, we're spending money in a lot of very good and noble causes. I'm not disagreeing with that in any way. I just want to see with this efficiency audit, yeah. if there is duplication, if, there, if there's opportunity for greater efficiency, I believe there will be. And I'm just saying when we find those efficiencies, It'll be incumbent on us as a legislative body then, uh, you know, uh, working in conjunction obviously with, with the governor and, and uh, stakeholders to use those dollars in the most effective way. And for me, my goal and objective is to be provide more money and direct assistance to those families. So it's just about being as effective as we can be with right. these taxpayer dollars. I just, I hope though that you will look at this though in terms of the the impact on multiple Texans as a result of the programs that TANF helps to administratively support oh, absolutely. so that they get those services as Representative, well. Representative, I'm, I'm a fan of what they're doing here at TANF. TANF's a very good program and I'm very supportive. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Representative.